I've come to Wim Delvoir's studio. He and his technicians are putting the finishing touches to his new version of cloaca. Cloaca is Latin for toilet. This work of art simulates the human digestive system. You put food in one end and something else comes out at the bottom. Soon, cloaca will go on show at a new exhibition about Belgian art but it's not working perfectly yet. We, we tested already the stomach, we, we tested the intestines and the rectum, but we didn't test uh, this, let's say. This is like the brains. What could go wrong? Oh, many, many stuff will go wrong. And in the first weeks, we will have diarrhea. I think the feeding is all right, but the rectum is always the big secret, and that's the most difficult thing. Because you have to go from uh, very liquid in the intestines to very uh, solid material in a very uh, small amount of time. This is the third generation cloaca and the first upright model. Previous horizontal versions have been exhibited in America and Europe. The preparatory drawings have been sold for thousands of pounds. There are some series of tiles which have all been snapped up. And there's the sun-dried sculptures produced by the machine itself, for which demand far exceeds supply. Now we double the price in an exhibition in Paris. And it sells very well now because it's in a gallery and people are all rushing to have a shit. Uh, uh, they're all worried that the shits will be uh, gone, that they won't have a shit. And actually have a waiting list uh, for certain shit, yeah. It depends, for example, the New York shit, people want a lot of New York shit. Which in itself contradicts uh, what my intentions were, because it's all about being equal. Cloaca is not the first work of art to use excrement to satirize the art market. Manzoni canned his own feces and sold them as art. But his shit wasn't intended as a positive message for mankind. Art is always about enhancing your status. So I'm very interested in shit because shit somehow um, is so anti-status. It, it's an um, equalizer. We are all uh, much more closer together if we think of our arts. Delvoy's art is not all shit. While Cloaca was digesting, Wim took me next door to his storeroom. Other works by him stood around in crates, just back from various international exhibitions. But Wim wanted to show me his new series of sculptures. They were luxury carrying cases designed for cheap old mopeds. Are these like special antiques then? No, they just we, we buy them in the papers. They're like the cheapest um, uh, motorcycles you can find, and it is really like the the brand who got the most successful with the lower classes. Let's say you end up having a very modernist uh, sculpture if you close it. Like um, it looks so Hans R.P. Henry Moorish, eh? Moorish is so so. Yeah, smooth and it's very, very heavy. Your hand? I estimate 500 kilograms or 400. Yeah. And this color is, um, this paint is uh, from Mercedes. Mercedes? Yeah, you know, it's very sexy. Delvoix had other works of art in preparation around town. We went for a drive in his car, which was as modest as his mopeds. In this workshop, a series of sculptures were being finished by specialized metal cutters for an exhibition in New York.
Wow. What's this? It's a truck. Modic truck. Delvoir had made a whole series of works that used the style of High Gothic. These works shared Cloaca's politics. They targeted Europe's holiest art historical style, and they were hymns to the working classes. Is that like a stained glass window? Or? Yes. The truck, it celebrates, well, it's like social realism. It celebrates uh, labor, proletarian life. Do you think bulldozers are our 20th century cathedrals? Yeah, and I think concrete also is like, as you have the Stone Age, the Bronze Age, we were in the concrete age. Right. And it's like saying goodbye to the 20th century in a way also. It's like saying goodbye to the 20th century. That was a great line. Most artists I got to make films about found it difficult to talk about their art, but not Delvoir. He sure knew how to make his work sound important. We drove back to his studio to see if his machine would produce something for us. What's for dinner tonight, Vim? It's going to eat uh, orange juice, tomato soup, apples and pear, uh, pizza, and then it has a Coke yeah. at the end. The amount of uh, computers pass the amount of human beings on this planet now. There's more computers than there are human beings. Really? Yeah. So, why, why this fascination for simulating our brain? While the whole gastrointestinal system, no one cares about simulating this, and it is a very sophisticated uh, thing. You simulate the human brain and you end up with Photoshop and, you know, Microsoft Word. And if you simulate the human digestive system, what do you end up with? Nothing really. Uh, no. <laughs> That's why it's so wasteful. <laughs> You're going to be Bill Gates. You know? I won't be. I like this work because it was the end game of contemporary art. To me, it was a symbol of how the art world had finally disappeared up its own backside. But for Delvoix, there was something else that was more important than its cynicism. It's realism. Are we looking at a representation of the human digestive system, yeah. or are we looking at the real human digestive system? Well, um, we are really looking at a human digestive system because we are using human bacteria. So it is the human digestive system. Uh, the whole scenario uh, of, of, uh, from mouth to arse is completely uh, um, copied. I left Delvoir's studio with a t-shirt and a pile of books. But this was the kind of material any art TV presenter would get from artists. I wanted more. Some people in Belgium had much more. Delvoir's most enthusiastic collectors are fellow countrymen who run a global corporation. They have a museum in their headquarters with many of his most famous pieces. In Belgium, Delvoix is admired for his formal innovations in the history of modern art. So once upon a time when Belgians used to make art like that. Didn't yeah, they? yeah. It's all changed. It is, yeah. So here we're between two uh, works of Wim, the cement mixer with ornaments, and then the gas canisters with uh, the delve blue, the painted uh, delve blue. Marcel Duchamp, he, he used objet trouvé in, in art and with his toilet, eh? but he didn't change the object. But when he, he goes a bit further... He was turning a ready-made back into an ornamental, decorative work of art. Yeah, and, and normally ornaments we find in churches or on antique things, things that everyone uh, accept as real art. Belgian curators see Delvoix as someone who's understood modern art and then moved it on a stage. But this, they say, is something modernist Belgian artists have been doing throughout the 20th century. Wim Delvoix is questioning himself what is art and what is not, and that what 
something that Marcel Brotars did too. It's like an abstract painting, but it's made out of just cheap old muscle shells that he probably ate for dinner over the course of a week. For us, it's garbage, huh? but he uses it in his artwork. They um, try to, um, to search for the line between art and not art. If you're an artist, why do something that might not be art? Why not just do things that are art? Uh, it's fascinating to, to, to try it. Nowadays, Belgians are taking all their artists very seriously. There was an enormous exhibition opening at the Museum of Modern Art in the capital, the first ever show dedicated to modernist Belgian art. It was grandly titled Visionary Belgium. This was an exhibition packed with works of art. There were many visionary Belgians, and Delvoix was one of them. Tucked away in one corridor in this crowded exhibition was an oil by the famous contemporary Belgian painter, Luc Timens. In another cramped corridor was an early Magritte. But there was one work of art that had a whole room to itself, Delvoix's Cloaca. In Cloaca, you basically when Delvoix brings together events in the becoming of Western civilization, which is both art and science. You know, obviously. So, you know, the great Renaissance man being Leonardo da Vinci, um, uh, for instance, being the quintessential paradigm of, you know, the artist, scientist. The scientist. And this is kind of, you know, here we, it's basically Wim Delvoix returning to the fault of, like, Renaissance man in a way. Like, why does everybody only see shit? I don't, you know, I don't quite get it. I mean, I, for one, see, like, a, a being, for, in, in a way, you know? I see an organism. I mean, I see something that is... You know, that, that lives and dies and everything, and that has to be uh, cared for and nurtured and all that. And in that way, it's an enduring work of art. And I don't find the fact that somebody would shit in a museum supremely offensive. I mean, there's more offensive things nowadays. Do you think this sculpture is beautiful? Um, well, that... No, I'm not sure whether that would be qualified as beautiful on any planet. But, uh, oof. well, shit happens. Belgian curators and critics felt even more deeply about Cloaca than I did. They saw it, or should I say her, both as a technological triumph and as a personal friend. But they made one even bigger claim for it. What is Belgian about this work of art? That visionary idea, that's really utopian idea, a, a science of imaginary solutions, that vision of the, of the world of tomorrow. And what's philosophy. utopian about a machine that produces excrement? Oh, it's not producing only, only that, it's producing, it's, it's producing what life is producing. It's surely a machine that produces excrement is dystopian. No, don't think so. Why? Uh, that's, that's maybe your opinion. I couldn't yet see how Delvoix offered a vision of a better tomorrow, but I still wanted a work. I needed a way of persuading the artist to give me one. I had a dinner date and I had a plan. I made sure I ate exactly the same food as Cloaca. I brought a little dessert then. Ah, good. Yeah. Oh, Wittemer, that's you know? very famous, yeah. yeah. That's the best chocolate in Belgium. Ah, oh, what a nice sound. I mean, these taste really good, don't they? Yeah, yeah, chocolates. And very Have expensive. Have you ever tasted this one? Oh, that's perverse. Well, what, which one is your favorite here then? Ooh, I think this one. Belgians admired Delvoix's utopianism, but I was more impressed by his realism. Other artists painted, sculpted, or borrowed real things, or made abstract paintings, but Delvoix made real things if indeed they were as real as the artist claimed. 
So, um, Vin, have you ever tested the excrement produced by your machine against the excrement produced by a normal human being? Because what I'm worried about is that you might not actually be making shit. You might just be painting shit. Okay. You know? Yeah. Like yeah. an artist. It's not only shit, but it's human shit. Can I test that? Would you let me take okay. away a bit of okay. your shit? I'd acquired my first Delvoix. It was that easy. And then it was a question of coming back the next day and collecting first one sample. I specially brought this thermos oh, okay. glass. All right, a couple of big pieces, please, then. Oh, two bits, and that's plenty. Oh, Jesus. You get it all. It smells so bad. And now for the second sample. This isn't the sort of thing that um, Robert Hughes or Kenneth Clark had to do when they presented arts programs. It's not easy. So last week I got your two samples. They arrived on the back of a motorbike, wrapped up and frozen. Uh, what we've done is compare the two samples bacteriologically. How convincing were the two samples? Um, well, surprisingly for me, they were very similar. Um, really? Certainly within the ranges that we'd expect amongst you know, different human beings, for example. Do you, do you think a turd can be a work of art? Um, personally, I wouldn't hang it on my living room wall. Um, <laughs> but hey, whatever blows your hair back. <laughs> I'd obtained my first Wim Delvoye, but my plan was flawed. The work that Delvoye gave me had been destroyed in the laboratory analysis. I'd have to try again. The artist has invited me to see his latest work of art in China. Delvoye doesn't only create machines that act like they're alive, he works with living things as well. He's invited me to visit his art farm, the most real work of art that he's ever made. This one is all with Russian tattoos, the other one is much more like with um, American tattoos. I'll show you my other pics. <laughs> so how many pigs have you got exactly on your farm? We got like 24 pigs now, all different sizes. But the whole idea was to make a distorted mirror of uh, our society and in the art world. So they are like paintings who grow. People buy a painting and then they expect this painting to get more important, to get more expensive. The, the funny thing is also tattooing is showing a lot of um, vanity and expectations from the human world so projections we make dreams we have like you like jesus or you like rock and roll so you want to express that on your body you want to say hey that's me that's my identity i believe in that and then um you put it on a pick with all your beliefs your whole belief system becomes completely ridiculous on one level this work of art like others by delvoix is an assault on the values of art but it's also something else. Normally pigs are factory farmed and industrially slaughtered for food, but not here. This is the utopia the Belgian curators were referring to. Art saves their lives, so it's like Schlinder's List. You know, you go to a pig farm and you get the nice ones out and you put them here, you tattoo them and all their brothers and cousins are, are eaten away, you know. So you're like a pig schindler? Yeah. <laughs> These are the Louis Vuitton pigs. This is Ben. Oh. This is like directly inspired by what I see in Shanghai and Beijing. Louis Vuitton is like this, uh, yeah, the best example of that obsession they have for, for, for designer stuff and status enhancing uh, accessories. Every Chinese girl uh, dreams of a Louis Vuitton back. In Delvoye's utopia, the pigs are protected with sunscreen factor 30. There's a special farmhand tasked with keeping the flies off them. Once a week, they are placed under a mild sedative and tattooed. Look what an intimate relationship I have with this pig. He's lying on me. He's, he's rolling over me. He has a character. This painting. It's not like another painting who's just dead. 
It's very difficult. It looks quite difficult. What is the future, though, of this pig? Um, he will be a painting. He will be a, a painting on a stretcher. <laughs> Once the pigs reach a certain age, Delvoir kills them and preserves their skin. The tattooed hides are sold as works of art. Beautiful! This is what American girls are dreaming to be. ¿Qué tipo de cuento vemos aquí? Ah, o sea, el, la, la, la princesa es un sueño. Es un sueño, la, la princesa Disney creo que está en el inconsciente de todo. O sea, pero lo divertido para mí es que, lo irónico es que está en la piel de un cerdo. O sea, si estuviera en un papel, o sea, por supuesto limpio, y me, soy niño y me fascinan, la, lo besaría, pero no me imagino besando la, la imagen que está en, en, en el cerdo. This was a prototype for a new way of living, which transformed existing social arrangements. In Delvoir's utopia, pigs became art. Farms became artist studios. Tattooists became contemporary artists. And poor Chinese villagers no longer scraped a living from the land. They were artists' assistants. He, he tried to give some resolution. Yeah, if machine have some rights like human being, if pig have some rights like human being, how do you think about the, the new relationship, the new context? It's our problem also. If you get inside his world, you can understand the future of the mankind. So I think he always presents some uh, solution of the uh, spiritual difficulties of our society. This was a kind of art in reverse. For centuries, artists have been creating art from life, but Delvoix was creating life from art. He was using art to give pigs a better, longer, happier, more meaningful existence. For a moment, I felt overwhelmed by a sense of a new dawn for mankind. I wanted to be part of this new community, but I knew I could never be a farmer. Fortunately, there was another option. Do you think it matters that I'm Jewish? Ah, I didn't think about that yet. Ah. I mean, here I am, a Jew, lying next to a pig, getting a crucifix tattooed on my back. Okay. You're testing boundaries. There's a lot of layers, isn't it? Yeah, a lot of layers. It's a mouse who's crucified. It's a mouse who dies for all the other mice that they can go to heaven wow. from now on. That's beautiful. <laughs> It was a rash decision. The art farm is an optimistic project, but as the tattooist needle cut into my skin, my optimism drained. I had chosen my tattoo, but my fellow roommate hadn't. Other pigs were killed to satisfy a human need, but Delvoix had created an elite of pigs killed for human vanity. In Delvoix's art farm, there was as much dark ambiguity as in his other works. Inside the work you can see I could have done another job. I could have done a tattoo studio. Imagine I would have done this seriously in real life. To show you're able to, but there's this social failure built in because it's art. It's only you're able to make an ex uh, a complicated machine, but then you basically, this machine basically only makes shit, so... Um, you, you socially fail with a machine like this, but at least you prove that it's by choice. I returned to London with my original Wim Delvoir. Delvoir regretted the way his critiques of the economics of art were so popular with art collectors. 
I thought that was a good thing and hoped now that I would make a sound investment in the booming contemporary art market. Wow. Is that permanent? Yeah. It's good, isn't it? It's Mickey Mouse on the cross with Minnie crying, OK? Could you auction my skin? What if I was to auction myself almost as a futures option? <laughs> when I die, right, yeah. you can have my skin. <laughs> How much it adds. It's a great idea. I, I, I think that we're quite a traditional co uh, corporation, and uh, I think um, the idea of, of auctioning a, 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 a future on a, on, a, on a dead body is, is not really our, our style, if you like. Really? No. OK, ballpark figure, then. How much? Uh, there is no figure I can put on that. It's, 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 a, it's a living sculpture, and it depends upon you. You know, you're, you're wearing it every day of the week, and it's, it's going through its own wear and tear, and... There's no, there's no figure you can put on that, no price you can put on that. It's priceless. Do you think it has more value on a pig or more value on me? Uh, I think it has more value on a pig because it is actually a, an object that you can acquire and, right. and, and, and buy. And it's, it's more systematically in the, in the sort of tradition of sculpture uh, that you can house in your home. I hadn't yet worked out exactly what my tattoo meant. Perhaps it was a membership card of a new society perhaps just another level of satire on the art market. Still, it looked like I'd have plenty of time to work that one out. Delvoir's tattooed pigs have made tens of thousands of dollars at auction, but I was apparently worthless. Unless, of course, any imaginative art collectors have been watching this television program. <laughs> And there's more from Ben next Thursday at 10. Tonight, Marcus Brigstock's own particular spin on the events of the week in the company of Dr Phil Hammond and creator of Yes Minister Anthony Jay. The late edition is next.